Hey, what's up everyone? James from Junkyard Fox, and we also have Old Cuervo back here. And we are finally out camping in beautiful Cloudcroft, New Mexico. One of our favorite places on the planet. Uh, we love being out here in beautiful sleepy grass campground. Sadly, due to wildfires and state park closures and all that, we couldn't camp this entire year. It's August and it's our first time camping in Cloudcroft, so uh, that's a little crazy. But finally, we, we have beautiful rain where it's relaxing. So we're about to start setting up our camp and you know the deal. We're gonna relax, eat some delicious food, drink some cold beers and have a good time. So thank you for joining us. Let's get started. So our campsite is set up. We are ready to relax. We did bring some firewood. I did bring my CRKT tomahawk that you never see me use. So I just wanted to bring it out today, change it up a little bit. Uh, we will be cooking up dinner in a bit. We got the staples here, some Doritos, some cheesy bread that's gonna go with our stew tomorrow. All our pots and pans are cooking stuff. Here are the groceries, of course, the most important one. And we have a rabbit in there. We have a lot of veggies, eggs, uh, potatoes, all that stuff. Now, before anyone makes a comment about, oh, this beer is crap or something, beer's beer, buddies. I, I can care less. And that's all they had available at the store nearby. So we'll take what we can get. And then, of course, we got this big boy right here. Mix it with some soda, coffee in the morning, and some bouillon for the rabbit stew we're going to be cooking up tomorrow. And we do have two new tents. Both of us are rocking new tents. You may have seen this one recently, uh, Cuervo, that's Cuervo's new tent. He used it in the last camping trip we did with uh, Red for My Resomination and our buddy Shadow and Colds. So he's already used this in one trip before, but it's still fairly new. You know, you, you wanna test it out in different environments and we are expecting rain. So we're gonna test that out. That is by Camp Pros. So far, he told me he likes it. It looks very spacious. And then I got a new tent by a company called Unigear. This is a very <laughs> year 3000 tent for me. Uh, very modern, very contemporary, but um, so far so good. It did take a while to figure out how to set it up, but fingers crossed that these are worthy tents. And in a couple of months after using them for several adventures in different seasons and uh, environments, we will be making a review on each. And then let's go ahead and give you a tour. So I set this up the wrong way. So my door's back here. There is a door on the other side, but it's just not, it's just too much of a hassle. So let me just give you guys a little bit of a rundown on my tent. Now this company also sent me a brand new sleeping bag. So far so good, I mean, it feels nice. This is the first time I'm gonna be using it. So um, I have no opinion on it yet. I mean, the quality seems pretty good, so hopefully it keeps me warm throughout the night. Shouldn't be too cold, but we are higher in elevation than what I'm used to. My other sleeping bag, I completely forgot they had sent me one, so I had already loaded this one out. But uh, it'll help me out. Just, you know, it's very windy. I don't know if you can pick that up, but it's, it's very windy. So this will add just a little bit more weight into the tent. It is very spacious. It is already looking bigger than my usual tent, my Embark one. So, so far so good. Also a double door. I can open that side as well. So that's the first time I have that, two doors. That's interesting. All right, so. All right, so this thing looks even more spacious than mine. It's bigger than mine over here. Uh, I mean, look at all this room here he's got. So he's got, oh, um, so check this out as well. So that same company that sent me the tent and the sleeping bag, they also sent an air mattress. So I gave it to Cuervo to test out. This thing feels incredible. And he already had one from before. So 
Uh, homie over here is just going to be sleeping on feathers. I mean, this thing is just feels comfortable. Uh, of course, the you know his hidden woodsman haversack, his clothes, and then over here we got an OKMO power station. This is where we're going to be charging all our electronics, our lanterns, flashlights, phones, all that stuff. It's also pretty hefty, about 30 pounds or something, so it's going to help with this wind. I mean, he can connect a PlayStation over here and play Red Dead Redemption if he wants. Uh, he's got his Shiner Bot cooler with beer. I mean, the guy's got a man cave over here. <laughs> uh, Cuervo, I'm going to steal a beer from you. Okay. All right. So, so far, so good. All right. Cheers, buddy. So these are the hats that we are using for this adventure. So you've seen this one several times throughout this year. Now this was my first ever wide brim hat. I was very rebellious in my younger years about wearing cowboy hats until I just ended up relenting. Uh, you know, they're just worth their weight in gold when you're outside, particularly in the desert. All that shade that it provides you, all the you know protection from glare and stuff. Very simplistic, a straw hat. There's a lot of holes here for ventilation, for some airflow, so it's great for the summer months. I did recently customize it a little bit. Now this hat band, the leather hat band, was given to me by Cuervo. So I placed it on here, and then I placed a crab claw. So check out that video if you haven't, our catch and cook crabs in Oregon. That was a dream of mine since I was a kid, to catch crabs and cook them right beside the water that we caught them from. And finally it happened this year in beautiful Oregon. So I did bring myself a trophy, bring it home, I preserved it, and now I have it in my hat. Like predators. <laughs> so yeah, this is my perfect summer hat. Love it. And then we have Gorbos over here. Now we've seen this hat many times before, but it's it's constantly evolving. Gorbos always tinkering with the stuff, uh, customizing it, and now it's it's really different. It looks really cool. So, Gorbo, uh, can you tell us about your hat? So the base of the hat used to be a uh, Stetson. I don't remember what it looked like anymore. And I trimmed the brim. As you can tell, it's very not very symmetrical, but it's all right. I put a uh, they call it a teardrop or it's a drop kind of crown on it the band is another Stetson hat and then I added this uh, bobcat jaw I think it's the right side of it that's really cool so that bobcat we found the skull years ago when we were hunting and it was the skull was in great condition we put it in the truck and it was in the truck for years Dylan the Bobcat skull and he was riding with us for years and we decided to use him for a Guervo Negro music video last year for the song Dark Trees check out that music video if you haven't and we were placing skulls around a fire because a witch was gonna perform a ritual and in between takes our buddy Lando who was the lighting person in the video he accidentally stepped on the the skull and he crushed it so Rest in peace, once again, rest in peace, Dylan the Bobcat. But uh, Cuervo did keep the, the jaw parts, and he was able to do something with that. So that check it check it out. That's pretty unique. That, how often do you see a Bobcat jaw on a hat? And also the feather is a turkey feather. The jawbone charm was uh, inspired by uh, Pirates of the Caribbean a little bit. Not many people know this, but the reason I put a feather on the hat... A lot of people, I guess it's mostly, an, they see it as like a native thing, but it started back in like the Res Renaissance period, where the musicians and the, the troubadours used to put feathers on their hats, on their little, um, I forgot what they call them, like the, those big hats that kind of flop. Mm. And yeah. So it started raining on us, uh, not heavy rain, but it's been consistent for about an hour. So we decided to just kind of, you know, not fight it and just kind of wait it out. So uh, both Guervo and I, we went to our tents, 
napped, you know, we're on our phones, whatever. Um, and yeah, we're just waiting off this rain. I'm not even really bothered by it. Uh, it's so beautiful. It's so peaceful. Uh, the only thing is that, you know, I do want to make the fire before sun sets. It is getting pretty chilly. We are high in elevation. And I am an idiot. I, I didn't bring a coat. Um, you know, thinking it's summertime and all that. I, I expected it to be blistering hot. Um, but it is pretty chilly. So I'll just wrap my wool blanket around me later on in the evening uh, while we're hanging out. And we will be making a fire pretty soon and cooking some ravioli with sausage and mushroom. Cheers, brother. Well, folks, it's chow time. So starting today, I, we wanted to start with something very easy. So we made our ravioli with mushroom and sausage. It's a very simple recipe. We'll have the video link to that up here if you want to check it out step by step. But now it's time to unwind, have some dinner, and drink a couple of cold ones.
dinner was great. Nice and simple recipe. And uh, now time to just warm up a little bit and just relax. So I didn't anticipate it to be this cold. So, you know, it's the middle of August right now, but I failed to think that, you know, to remember that we are in a higher elevation and it is currently the monsoon season. So a lot of mist, a lot of clouds are passing by and it makes it pretty cold. So I didn't bring a coat. Now, normally we have a backup coat in the truck at all times, one of Corvo's like canvas ones. But a couple months back, somebody broke into my truck and stole a couple of things, that coat being one of them. So some crackheads somewhere was running around with, with one of Corvo Negra's coats. But um, yeah, it's not too bad now. Now that we have some food in our system and we got the fire nice and stoked up, it's nice and warm. And I got my wool blanket. Corvo's got his, uh, not his shamar, his, uh, his poncho. And I think he brought a coat himself. So, you know, he managed to think ahead. So yeah, time to relax and uh, just enjoy the fire and get a good buzz. So we're about to call it a night. We're putting stuff away and this guy was right behind our ice chest. It appears to be some kind of salamander. Man, he is huge. I mean, this guy's a good nine inches. I don't want to get too close. I don't know if it's poisonous or anything. So, you know, better to play it safe. But I mean, that is fascinating. Okay, so I did a quick search. This appears to be a yellow spotted salamander. I knew it was a salamander, some kind of amphibian, uh, but this is the largest salamander I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so just for reference, I'm gonna place my Sharpie pen there. So look at that. I didn't read anything that if it was venomous or anything, but just, you know, as with all wildlife, leave it alone. I've already disturbed it enough as it is, so. Have a good night, buddy. Hope you stay warm. Don't get picked up by an owl. So it has been raining for about 12 hours now. It started around 2 a.m., very relaxing. The pattering sounds on the on a tent is like one of my favorite things ever. So it was, it was like I said, very relaxing, but it's just been nonstop. And it, I mean, I'm talking pouring rain, not a light drizzle. I'm texting Cuervo, I'm checking how his tent's doing. He says it's fine, he's just hungry. Um, my tent is doing okay, although I am seeing water seeping in here. My first impressions on the tent were, you know, it's nice, but it's, it's, it seems a little thin. And sure enough, with this barrage of rain, it's starting to pull in here. So I'm starting to get a puddle in here. There's nothing we can do for now other than wait the rain out. So I think Corvo and I are going to head into the truck, head into town and go eat at a mom and pop place and then uh, reassess the situation. There's really nothing we can do. It looks like it's going to be raining all day. 
So it looks like the rain is seeping in from here and we have this small puddle here. Now, to be completely honest, a little bit of that is my fault because I had this open earlier because I was looking outside. I was looking at, at the rain and I ended up falling asleep, dozing off. And while I'm asleep, obviously rain starting to trickle in here, water starting to trickle in. So a lot of this is my fault, but I am noticing when I keep it closed, you'll see like a slight, you know, like little drip go down like this. So it's not just me. So yeah, nice tent, but it's not gonna be able to handle hard weather. All right, yeah, mine's starting to puddle a little bit, but nothing too bad. I moved all my stuff towards the center. All right, let's go eat in town. just got back from town we stopped to eat we did stop at the dollar store to buy some bologna and bread in case the weather doesn't let up which i highly doubt it will be uh we don't have to cook anything we could just make sandwiches here we have some doritos so we'll just be hanging out in the truck in the meantime i also bought a towel at the dollar store that i can go kind of soak up the the little puddle in my tent so that's what i'm going to run and go do just put the towel in there uh in the meantime because I don't have a coat, I'm busting out an old faithful over here from my haversack. So it rarely sees any action. In fact, last time it saw action was in Sleepy Grass Campground, but time to put on this poncho. That's good enough. Also had to stop really quick into Cuervo's tent to get the most important precious item of all so we can uh, drink beer in the truck. Well, there's nothing else to do but drink. So cheers, buddy. Cheers, everyone. So Cuervo started getting the fire going. Now, as you can imagine, with 13 hours of nonstop rain, it's a little bit of an uphill battle. Now, we did put away our firewood in the truck the night before, knowing that it would be, you know, kind of rainy and, and foggy. So we did put that away, but all the smaller sticks, all the pencil size sticks, we don't have any. And I just gathered these a couple minutes ago, but as you can imagine, they are all soaked. So I'm placing them up here so they can start cooking with the heat and uh just relax tonight once all this is dry we're gonna save that for tomorrow tonight we're just gonna eat some bologna sandwiches nice and simple and tomorrow for breakfast we'll get the coffee going and uh cook up that jackrabbit stew whoops Yeah, screw it. That'll do, donkey. Not sure if you can hear that. Coyotes, po possibly?
it's over for you, little juniper. So we're getting pretty hungry. We don't want to really mess with the fire too much. We're trying to ration the wood we have for tomorrow's breakfast, which is the other video the jackrabbits do. So we're just going to keep it simple and just make some bologna sandwiches with some cheese and some Doritos. Nice and simple, but it'll hit the spot. No cooking necessary. some Doritos. It's morbid time. So there's this myth about Bigfoot that if you get a log, like a fallen log, and you hit it against another one that's on like laying down, like a big one, and you hit it a couple of times, you'll hear a response in the distance and supposedly that's Bigfoot talking to you. So it's pretty cool. We'll do it and then we'll catch him. Catch and cook Bigfoot. Green chili Bigfoot stew. So the way the myth goes, he'll probably make us believe we caught him. He's a trickster dude. Mm -hmm. In the name of science, we're going to try to call Bigfoot. Do you hear the echo? Not only that, but I don't know if you called Bigfoot, but you called squirrels. There's like three of them up there hiding in the grass. So right now we are preparing our breakfast. We're going to be making some of that jackrabbit stew. We'll have a whole separate video for that. But um, while it cooks, because it's a stew, we're just letting it take its time, cook for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. In the meantime, you know, right now it's just kind of relaxing time, getting rid of garbage and slowly start making our way to the truck, start, you know, putting away the sleeping bags, the blankets, all that stuff that doesn't need to be here anymore. So... Once we're done eating, we could just pull up steaks and start making the drive home.
So we want to start boiling it for a good amount of time so it can start softening, softening up. So, so far, first impressions on this tent are very, pretty positive. It's a very spacious tent. I like it. It was, it was fairly simple to set up. Uh, the one issue was, you know, the, the little puddle that was here. But I'm, it rained last night. It rained this morning. And there was not a drop in here. So, I'm starting to think it was my fault when I left this open for a few hours. Uh, because there was no water in here today. So, yeah, I'm, I'm admitting that it could have been you know, just my doing. Also to play it safe next time is when I zip up the door, I'm not gonna zip it down here, I'm gonna zip it up here just to get it higher off the ground in case that's gonna contribute to that, to water getting in here. Uh, but overall, really spacious, really like it. So we'll test it out pretty soon once more. As for the Unigear sleeping bag, this thing was very comfortable. I don't think it's meant to be like some you know, sub-zero temperature type of thing. It, it's probably the same strength as my old sleeping bag, but it just feels so soft. I mean, these last two nights were some of the best sleep I've had while camping in years, if not ever. Really relaxing, you know, with the rain pattering and all that. Uh, the fresh mountain air finally back in the woods, and this definitely helped. So, so far, great first impressions from Unigear. Good stuff. Okay, Cuervo, so your first time trying out the Unigear sleeping air pad. What'd you think? It was great, man. Uh, I have a lot of trouble sleeping on my side when we camp because, yeah, hard floors. But this thing, it, it felt like I was on my bed pretty much. Yeah, and it's, you said it stayed inflated the whole time? Yeah, because it has this kind of lock right here where you, had to, you just have to press down on it and it releases the air and then it's really cool. Cool. Yeah, I gotta try this out pretty soon. Looks nice. Yeah, it's cool. Some cayenne. And some thyme. So we almost forgot to show you guys our OKMO power station. Now this thing right here is what's charging all our lanterns, all our electronics or flashlights, even charging my other power bank. That way when it's fully charged, I can take it to my tent. That way, you know, it's charging my phone while I'm sleeping. And this thing is super awesome. You'll have a full review from us in a couple of weeks. But this OKMO power station is really cool. And not only is it going to be useful, of course, when you know traveling or camping, but in emergencies, you know, a power blackouts, something along those lines. Uh, and you know, you know how it is. So if you're prepared to mind it, you're a prepper, you know, this is definitely something to take into consideration. It is definitely a game changer. I am glad we brought it. Now, the company, OKMO, they sent me an email letting me know that August is the birthday of this company, and they are running an OKMO day sale, which offers the lowest prices of the year. So the price for the model G1000 is only $599.99, so 600 bucks. That's 200 off its usual price. The price for the SG-1000P is only $1,099.99. That's $400 off the usual price. And the price for the SG-2000P is only $1,499.99. And that is $700 off. So I'll have the link down below so you can check them out if you are interested. And really, really enjoying this. Really cool. A game changer for sure.
so we've had this guy simmering here for about two hours look at that everything is just so soft and uh, yeah I'm gonna be smashing a little bit of the potatoes so the starch thickens it up a bit because I don't want it to be too soupy but yeah everything looks great so let me bring it up here away from the coals yeah that looks great and yeah just smush some of the potatoes Take a look at the rabbit, the little rabbit legs. They look like turkey to me. Oh yeah. So we're gonna let this cool off for just a bit and then it's chow time. some cheese bread Bam. all right chow time Okay, Cuervo, so what is the verdict on our jackrabbit stew? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You would not believe that a jackrabbit would, would be the result of that. Like, I mean, that is delicious. Mm. Man, that's the best lunch we've had in a long time. All right, so time to grub. Okay, everyone, so that is about it for us. We've already packed up all our gear. We already finished our lunch. That jackrabbit stew was amazing. So we'll make a separate video for that if you want to just follow that, you know, closely. And that's about it, guys. We're going to start making our way back to town. This was a great adventure. Love the rain. I mean, it did set us back a little bit, but just we were overdue for some rain. When was the last time you saw rain on the Junkyard Fox channel? <laughs> so great stuff love testing out the new gear love enjoying the campfire you know exchanging stories and joking around and just hanging out with my buddy over here so as always thank you so much for all your views your support uh, please like this video if you enjoyed it comment down below if you have any questions comments suggestions and we'll see you guys next week with another video now go outside and get your boots dirty